Now we turn our attention to fiscal policy. And as you can see from the definition here, we are talking about government spending and taxes. So monetary policy is going to be about the Federal Reserve. It's going to be about interest rates. Um, those are definitely key words that would tell you, central bank, maybe there's another one, that you're looking at monetary policy. But with fiscal policy, it's going to be Congress and the President for the United States. It's going to involve words like taxes and spending, and those are your key words that you're dealing with fiscal policy. But for both of them, specifically we're going to focus on fiscal policy right now, it, the key for fiscal policy is it has to be taxes and spending changes intended to achieve macroeconomic policy objectives. So clearly our government spends money for a lot of reasons, and they spend a lot of money too. Um, they spend it for defense spending, they spend it for education, they spend it for all sorts of reasons, and those are not considered fiscal policy. It is fiscal policy if the government changes the spending and or taxes it is doing because it is trying to achieve a macroeconomic policy objective, such as trying to increase economic growth. So if we are in a recession and the government actually gets together and manages to pass and sign a bill very quickly, as, they, as quickly as they can, to try and fight the recession, that is fiscal policy. Another key word here that you can see in the definition is federal. So the only taxes and spending we're talking about that can be fiscal policy is at the federal government level. So states and cities and other localities might also attempt things that might look like fiscal policy, but only federal spending is considered um, fiscal policy. There's another thing we want to mention when we talk about fiscal policy. Um, what I'm trying to say with fiscal policy is there is a change in government spending. There's a change in tax. Something is is actually actively being done in order to enact this fiscal policy. There's another feature of the government's budget that happens automatically, and we have a different name for those. Automatic stabilizers are the name we use for these sorts of features of the economy that change spending and taxes automatically. So automatic stabilizers are going to be examples like taxes and unemployment. So think about the unemployment system first. Um, it exists at all times, so it's already a feature of the economy. And if you qualify for unemployment insurance and you lose your job in a specific way, then you can file for unemployment. And so that is a spending that is happening. As we go through the business cycle, more people will qualify for unemployment, more people will file for unemployment, and so our payment of unemployment will go up automatically, not because Congress got together and decided to make a fiscal policy change. And so that's the distinction. If it's something that is already a feature of the economy, like unemployment insurance, yes, spending will go up, and yes, it's happening because we are in a recession, but it's not considered fiscal policy. It's an automatic stabilizer. Taxes work in that when the economy is doing really well, income rises, and so the amount of tax revenue being collected increases because it's an income tax. And when things go bad, we see tax revenue go down. And again, that is the sort of thing you'd want to do with discretionary fiscal policy. But because it's part of the economy that's happening without any sort of um, independent action by the Congress and the president, that's not considered fiscal policy. It's considered an automatic stabilizer. Uh, a little bit of information to give you some idea about our government spending and tax situation just so you're more educated on it. Um, I'm drawing here a pie chart of the federal government expenditures from 2014. And what we see here from what I've drawn so far is almost half of the budget is for something called transfer payments. And that's going to include all the entitlements we hear about. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, any of the Obamacare um, payments that have to be made. Basically half our budget, our spending budget, is, is kind of off limits. When they call them entitlements, what they mean is the government, Congress, has set it up so that this spending is going to happen. This is not something we're going to debate about. We're not going to talk about it. We don't have to come up with the money for it. It's going to happen. And so when we, as we go forward here and talk about how our government has been spending more than it takes in for some time, um, then we need to realize that any attempts at balancing the budget is going to have to deal with these transfer payments because otherwise we're trying to balance the entire budget with only looking at half of the items. All right, so that's the biggest part. The next uh, biggest slice, and no, I doubt these are 
to scale, about 19% is defense spending. Um, so that's your military spending. And so, again, um, a lot of the fights they have when it comes to budgeting, uh, balancing the budget um, will be to go after the defense spending. But even if you took it all away, you've only reduced um, by about 19%. All right, and I don't think anybody's saying to get rid of all of it. Um, 13% is going to be state and local governments. And it's probably going to be a lot of um, those mandates that the government makes, um, block grants for some programs perhaps, um, maybe some other issues. And here's a concerning one. Here is 11% in 2014 is interest payments on our debt. And, of course, we haven't talked about it, but we have been carrying um, a growing amount of debt as a government. And so when you have debt, as you know, if you have a credit card, you have to pay interest on it. And in a sense, when I said that this part of the budget is not really up for debate, well, this part isn't really either. That's kind of market driven. What is the interest rate? All right, it's 11, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, X percent. And so it's just going to be a total dollar amount that has to be paid. Um, so if we add in the 49% to the 11% in 2014, 60% of our budget is basically off limits. And then all the other stuff you hear, yeah, this is definitely not to scale. Um, that's supposed to be 8.1%. All the other stuff you hear about, everything from the ludicrous examples like bridges to nowhere or weird studies we're doing, and they're like, oh, we need to cut that, um, federal aid to other um, governments, that sort of thing, all of that fits into an 8% piece of pie. So even if we cut everything that sounded ludicrous, we've only cut 8% of the budget. And we couldn't cut 8% of the budget because that would also include all the payments for any of the agencies that they're doing, um, you know, the various departments and whatnot. So, so yeah, there is our um, expenditure pie. Now let's look at our tax collection, or not just our tax collection, but our revenue side. On the revenue side, there's two things that account for most of our Revenue. In other words, the amount of money the government takes in is over here, and the amount of money that the government spends is over here. And this is just showing you what categories each falls in. So 43% of our revenue comes from our income taxes. So the 1040s, April 15th, Fun Fest that we all have. That is 43% of our budget. So maybe you, th you thought it was a bigger percentage, but it is just 43%. So then we have another one over here, which is 35%, and they're calling it social, um, social insurance taxes. But basically, those are your payroll taxes. Um, so if you look at your pay stub and you see FICA, state payments for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, that's what's happening there. And then you have business taxes account for 13%. So there's also a lot of political debate about taxing businesses. But the reality is that we don't um, really get a lot from that 13%. And again, lovely here to scale this 9% part is any other revenue, fee, whatever else it is that the government might collect on. So what I want you to realize here is the Social Security system um, which is our payroll taxes, a section here, the money collected each year is used that year. It is, as you probably know, not saved to be paid to you when you retire. Um, the thing you may or may not know is it is used that year for whatever. Um, up until a few years ago, we would collect more in this little piece of pie than we needed to pay out to current Social Security recipients and, and other um, recipients of these sort of policies. And so the extra was just tossed into our little circle here, and we wrote an IOU to the agency that would be needing it sometime in the future. So we were basically borrowing against the Social Security system. And so now um, that we've gotten to the point that we're paying out more each year than we are taking in, now it's time to collect on all those IOUs, which are basically owed to ourselves, right? The government borrowed with one hand and, and, uh, and now has to pay itself back. Um, so anyway, that's one of the things you just need to understand is why you hear discussions about Social Security system being in trouble. Um, it's twofold. One, that we're no longer taking in enough to cover it. Our, our outgoing is higher now than our incoming. And number two, we didn't bank the extra that we had been collecting for years and years and years. Instead, we just got a pile of um, IOU debts to ourselves in there. Real quick, since we're talking about spending and taxes, 
I just want to give you some information about the government situation. We have been running what you call a budget deficit for a number of years now, uh, probably a number of decades now, which a deficit is defined as uh, a shortfall in the budget. You had that big pie of money that you pulled in, in revenue. You do the spending. You need more than you took in. Then you're running a deficit. So just to give you an idea of what kind of deficit this country has been running, $483 billion in 2014, $439 billion in 2015, so the trend is looking good, but then in 2016, it turned around. And it is possible these numbers could be adjusted some as they, you know, continue to work with it. But this gives us an idea that basically half a trillion a year in extra spending, all right? Our total budget is something like $3 trillion. So that's a significant percentage beyond our means that you could say that we're going each year. And so as these deficits happen, what happens in a particular year is we have to come up with $483 billion to do the spending. You know, we're, we've promised the spending. We need it. Where do you get it from? You go to the bond market. And specifically, the government uh, will issue the U.S. Treasury bonds, Treasury bonds, Treasury bills, all those different things. Those are IOUs. So the government issues them. They sell them to the public. And... And then that was done in one year just to fund the deficit, but then that is a pile of bonds that the government owes, right? And so that pile of bonds accumulates into debt. Um, so there's two things to say about the debt. I'll just give you the figure for 2016. If you look at the entire pile of bonds outstanding, 19.9 trillion, basically $20 trillion dollars is outstanding, uh, which is a hard amount to even comprehend. To give us an idea of if this is a big number or not, which sounds kind of ludicrous even as I say it, um, what is our income for the year? Income for the year is GDP, and one estimate I saw for it is $18.4 So that looks bad. That looks really bad when you owe more <laughs> than you earn an income, right? You can you can turn that into your own personal um, experience, what that would mean, that you owe more than your annual income. There is one qualifying thing I want to say about that, though. Officially, uh, what they're concerned most about is debt held by the public. So when I said that the Social Security system, they're putting IOUs, right, when they, when they use that revenue, um, some of this $19.9 trillion are those sorts of bonds, but they call intra-governmental agency debt. So what we really are concerned about is the debt you have to actually pay to another entity. And if you look at just that debt, it is already up to $14.1 trillion. It wasn't that, it was just a few years ago that that was as low as 9 or $10 trillion. So it is, this is really the figure you want to look at. We make $18 trillion-ish in income. And we actually owe fourteen trillion ish in debt, and that itself is concerning. Particularly when you look at we're not apparently slowing down growing this debt by half a trillion each year. All right, so depressed you enough? That gives you a good understanding of fiscal policy, where our government's money come, where our money for the government comes from, where it goes, as well as the um, situation we are in as far as deficit and debt.